Oh, uh, so, oh, I don't know if I just misread that, but I, I bit into this apple because I was like, well, maybe it'll heal me a little bit. Apparently, it's a poisoned apple, and now I have an upset tummy. Maybe that's why the two apples were indifferent. Man, if that, if that said poisoned apple and I'm just illiterate, I'm editing that out. Uh, also, that, that one is also yucky. That apple... Oh. It said, um, I failed a saving throw against upset stomach. Man, I just wanted to eat a little apple, you know? Okay, I have healed a little bit. Well, we both have. Ooh, let's send that to camp. Oh, yeah. Okay, while well, I deal with an upset stomach, I'll let Karlak. Okay, good. We are no longer upset tummy. We are no longer upsetty spaghetti. Oh. Well, howdy do da. A padlock key? Well, that was probably for. Actually, I don't know. I don't think we really had. Ooh, look at that. I don't think we really had any key things. Oh! <gasps> Misty step. Oh, dude, dude, do you want it, Gail? Gail can have it. Quite ready for you. Quite ready. Quite. Oh, I'm gonna read this. This book comprises several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain first-hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Palador the Swift, wood elf storyteller hailing from the wood of sharp teeth. It took me several ten days of quiet habitation in the wood before the venerable Palador felt comfortable revealing his presence to me. The longer I stayed, demonstrating I was no threat to his health and peace, the more he open he was to gentle inquiry. This tale, relayed to me on a chilly morning as we stoked a small fire between us, was like none I had heard before or since. I asked if it was fiction, and he insisted emphatically it was as true as his own right eye. Long ago, before my eyes and ears, before your lonesome quill, my dear scribe, there was an empire of people, or perhaps only belief, an empire of brain eaters, soul wasters, they called themselves illithids, the flayers of mind. The children of Gith were bowed, bent in service to the flayers, a passionate people, made to serve a cold belief. The flayers were untouchable, their minds a great oppressor, no proud will or passion could break Gith's children free. Until at last a reckoning, its source unknown, its power unproven, but its events, history making, the cow would not be cracked. Gith's children fought back valiantly, their freedom theirs, the flayers bent and broke until today. Look. Lessons for Sensible Living Zario's Fall. The forward of this brief account of Zario's fall captures the tone of the entire text. Greetings, sensible folks. Already I can detect grumbling in the agitated rattle of pipe stem against teeth. A lesson dedicated to an archduke of Avaris has Harrington taken leave of his senses. Quiet your complaints. I assure you I have not. It is true that cosmic occurrences are often insensible and by their, by their very nature, but the tale of Zariel strikes close to home. In her downfall, you will be reminded of those haughty do gooding neighbors and acquaintances who rightfully arouse your suspicions. One moment they are suggesting you grow turnips rather than potatoes on that fallow patch, and the next they have their kitchen knives strapped to their belt and are suggesting you explore the abandoned crypt behind the Giles farm. I believe Zariel is the fallen archangel? Fallen angel? Yes. In short, Zariel was a celestial being tasked with monitoring the ebb and flow of the blood war, of which more in volume 21 matters of little importance to sensible folk. <laughs> okay. Observing was not righteous enough for Zariel, though, and she took it upon herself to become directly involved. Like the oaf who sees two fellows fighting over a spilled tankard of ale and, rather than applauding their efforts, cracks their skulls together and causes a tavern-wide brawl. She invaded Avernus, was defeated, and now ru now rules there, corrupt and wicked. What can sensible folk learn from this foolish tale? It is obvious. Do not strive what cannot be corrected. Look not to distant lands and conflicts, but to your fields, your family, and your friends. There is nothing but misery to be gained from interfering in the hardships of others. What a dick. Whoa. <laughs> what a, what a, what a short-sighted individual to not care about the hardships of others. To be sure, you can get busybody-ish, but... Uh, the way, wait, wait, what did that say? 
The drawings in this book are crude but enthusiastic. While the ink is faded and the pages ragged, the author's gusto remains. Let's see. <laughs> this, I just saw the woman's eyes were dusky, filled with mystery and promise, and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> This book is packed full of tales of adventure. The monsters are ferocious, the men are muscled, and the women are buxom, and the clothing is easily torn. Something is cleft and twain on every other page, although you do find a passage that's a little less bloody. The woman's eyes were dusky, filled with mystery and promise. Bowderun was intrigued. Isn't he like the god or something of Baldur's Gate? Anything, he asked. Anything, she said. Just name it, it can be yours. And what do you want in return? Oh, just a small thing, she smiled. Balderan laughed. Nothing was about him was small. I want your soul, Balderan, she sighed. Give me your spirit, and whatever you desire shall be yours. Balderan considered this for a moment. Very well, I want a turnip. She hesitated. Your soul in exchange for a turnip? A nice turnip, not a Balderin. Very well. Dark smoke swirled around the woman whose skin was turning red. Then you shall... The next couple pages have been torn out. When the story resumes, the woman, now fully revealed as a devil, is kneeling at Balderin's feet. Curse you, Balderin. I am bound to you. Yours to call upon when you need me, and your soul is your own once more. Let that be a lesson to you, laughed Balderin. Never underestimate the power of a turnip. What did you do <laughs> to that woman with a turnip? <laughs> oh my gosh. This pub, the publisher's, oh wait, yeah, no. I think we haven't read this. The publisher's note claims this volume promotes magical theory too radical for the mainstream. This excerpt is attributed to the high artificer. Artificer, I want to be an artificer. Thara Bryn of Baldur's Gate. I suppose they seek to silence me, believing that an artificer of the high house would not stoop to publish in any volume outside the great Gondian journals they so diligently guard. Mm, yes, the ivory tower. But they forget that I am not so grand. Before I lent my name and knowledge to the house, high house of wonders and all the marvels therein, I was not but a lazy farm girl who liked to look up. And that was how I first saw them, the slow and serene earth modes, entire mountains migrating through the sky. It was later I learned of their origin, the ancient Netherese empire that fashioned them, of the residual magic so potent it sustained them still. The wizards of Netheril carved marvels out of the mundane, lifted the earth aloft for industry, for sport. It was later still, after I earned my place at the High House, that I learned of the long shadow Netheril cast among the, along the evolution of our craft, that their great flying cities fell in folly and flame does not diminish the wonders they wrought. In this stubborn aversion to studying them, to learning what they learned, is the very antithesis of Gaunt's teachings. Yes, many of the catastrophes inflicted upon the centuries were fruit born of meddling with Netherese seed. Yes, their last shining bastion fell into shadow, their lord twisted the Shar's dark and destructive designs. And yes, I say again, whether the High House will sanction it or no, to study the very flame of creation is worth it, even if the fires should consume us. A worthy goal. I do want a place that I can put my books. It would be nice to have a little bookshelf, you know? Like Skyrim. Ew, there's an animal carcass in the bed. You can poke the canopy bed. Ooh, that's gross. I wonder if this floor will break. Hey, it is cracked stones. I wonder who or what those chains are for. I was like, this room looks like a boss room. Scroll of whole person and basic poison. Well, is there something up above? I can't see anything above. Okay, I have picked up a gilded chest and I'm going to throw it because I am doing bludgeoning damage to the floor. Haha, -ha, see, look at this outline. Oh, dang, the path is interrupted. Okay, first step is the hardest. Oh. Okay, all I had to do was hit it. Well, maybe, I mean, there, there was obviously cumulative damage going on here. Okay, you, darling. How delicious. I want you. 
Let's go. Let's move. Okay. I was like worried we were gonna run out. No one stopped me yet. Don't waste a step. Ooh. I mean, we may. I was like, we may have already been in here, but. Ooh. Breathe deep. Cave exit. Yeah, I heard a, I heard a roll happen. I don't know. Oh, it is just through to here. Travel through the Underdark. What? Uh, I don't know. Ab somebody who is saying this? Somebody up above me? I, I want to steal all this stuff, but I am also curious about this person who is speaking. I'm also curious about... Wait. Oh, there you are. What? Mm, I want to have a word. <clears throat> These goblins have blood on their minds. I am leaving. I suggest you do the same. Who are you? And what? what are you? A level three human. Yeah, but what do you do? And where did you get those clothes? I want to kill you just so I can get those clothes and give them to someone. There's probably like a little hole through here. I don't know. Hey, look at this. I mean, there's one. Yeah, okay, there is a burrow hole. What are you doing, guy? And how did this human get in here? Is it somebody, like, behind the locked door? Anyway, I'm stealing all this stuff from the slavers. You've been caught mid-robbery. Oh! Your next move had best be a careful one. Oh! With your prize discarded... The matter can Wait, rest. are you a slaver? Because if you're a slaver, then I'll just murk you. How's that? Or maybe I'll just have a Starian do well, it. Well, hello. You can only hurt bad guys. And a Starian could wear that outfit. Is that... If I Maybe this is good to have a Starian on the squad because I can't do evil things because I'm a paladin. But a Starian can do evil things because he enjoys it. <laughs> Let's see. Step if he's a slaver, I don't mind. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stab him, and I assume he is a slaver. <laughs> Not stab your friends. Your aggression has won you <laughs> no friends. Any further violence could be met with the same. I also want to steal. Okay, you're gonna let me do it again. Be very, very quiet. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> Just stab this guy. Oh my gosh, look at his stuff. <laughs> I stabbed this guy and he's like, no, no, don't do that again. And Asterian's like, okay. And then as soon as he turns his back, he's like, hiya. <laughs> the goddess Loviatar. I want to read it. Diagrams of bodies twisted in, into impossible shapes. Okay, I don't feel bad, but <laughs> if you're like somebody who's into this. Be wary of your mortal limitations. While it is tempting to allow pain's ecstasy to sweep you away, particularly during a delicious bout of self-flagellation, broken bones hinder worship of our maiden of pain. Instead, when the body is spent, focus on our whipping, or perhaps nail removal. Pliers or blade is recommended to ensure Loviatar may forever revel in your agony, as is her right. What is she, Char? Like, oh my gosh. 
Oh, it's necrotic. Will Willing Whip gains resistance, grants resistance to necrotic damage, dealing additional one to six or necrotic damage to nearby targets, including the wielder. But it does grant resistance to necrotic damage. Interesting. And an axe. This is like an offhanded axe. The Scourge Mistress's Bane. Chance to inflict the target 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. So these two in combination would be pretty potent, maybe. Interesting. Okay. And we have a dagger. I will give it to... Oh, well, he, he can actually keep it. Uh, yeah, keep that. Send that to camp. Send that to me. I am the money person. We'll send the book to Gale. And we'll send these to Olverdira. Well, we probably should have sent him to camp. If it gets to be too much. And alas, I wanted the man's clothing. Asterion would have looked really good in that. I'm just saying. What to do? Also, now I can steal. That's what this <laughs> <is my> <laughs> uh, I won't trade with um, slavers, but I'll steal their stuff. I do still have that um, that slaver enclave actually that I haven't dealt with yet. That's another thing to put on the list. A scroll of revivify. Now I'm curious what happened to the other simple enough. slavers. I thought maybe the yeah, I thought the priestess's key would unlock this. Like as soon as I saw that it was locked. Oh, but we've already been in here. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think we just hop, skip, and jumped into here. Oh wait, does that door leave? Door goes where? We'll go, we'll go look. Oh! Oh, did I lockpick my way into here the first time around? Because I definitely got in there. Oh well, that's cool. Mostly I'm also kind of curious. Oh hey, it's a saloon door. See? Hello? Oh yeah, we got into here earlier too. We like hop skipped and jumped into here. We gotta be able to go into here, right? You think? What's that? What is what? He just perception rolled what? I and he had to be in the corner. I feel like that's something on the other side. Something's freaking out on the other side. Jeez. Careful, I bind. Careful, I bind. A crooked touch. Yeah, we need to. Holy moly! Yes, please. Oh, I did the wrong button. Oh my gosh, a nat 20. Oh, so much money. There is, there is got to be something. Oh, unless it was up above it, no. Oh, hey. There's somebody in here. It says Faithful of Maglabla, which I think is the original goblin god. Oh, I can... I can he oh, look! Oh, jeez. I'm pledged to the absolute arsenal. Praise his ever-bleeding axe. Praise his throne of flaming iron. 
praise McGlobbyet. You know McGlobbyet. Mm -hmm. A tyrannical deity who treats his goblinoid followers as slaves. Trying to interrupt my prayers? Scared of a real god? You're as goomless as the rest of them. Pray to whoever you want, it's a free world. <laughs> Uh, how'd you land yourself in uh, that cage? I want to ask that too, but I don't know if I get to. Because I'm loyal to McGlobbyet. Because I ain't having my head turned by some upstart god. Uh, gods are fickle. My, no, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, yeah, absolutely. The other goblins seem to love her. They like feasting, fighting, and fornicating. Who doesn't? Absolute gives them that. Gotta know your place in the world, though. McLubbyat's kept us in line. That's what a god's supposed to do. Oh, yeah? You think this is funny? I'll be the one laughing when things turn ugly. Oh, well. Safer in here. And I did. I mean, they already kind of have gone ugly, honestly. Be what? careful. There are traps about. Yeah, but where, darling? Also, somebody's angry at me. Track or Nick Nick? Oh, but there's a rat. The absolute... <gasps> oh, let's have a Starian go in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this man work. Ready or not. I just love a good finger fry. A good finger fry? Aw, uh, I say I'd like to get him in here. But there's no high grounds as far as I can tell. That's a matching door. Oh, you do move around. Unfortunate. I wonder if I could put somebody over there? I don't think they'd be able to see very well, though. All year, any one of you casting aspersions on the absolute... Aspersions! <laughs> ...and cram it up your faithless arse! Dang it. Hands off my tongue, you bloody burk. I'm pledged to the absolute, arse and all. Hold on. Let's see. What in the ruddy hells is an axe person? Axe. That is not what I meant to do. Dang it. I did pick up something. No hesitation. Oh, so close. All right, is this a, uh, we just need a cantrip. Mm. Nice. We are getting it. Gale is not doing well. I just really need us to level up. Oh, I gotta talk to the rat. Mm -hmm. There was something about, um, ooh, is that a, Thank you. There was something about one of the rat said before that there was Is that blood? Something no, dark. Never mind. Underneath us. I oh I don't have it on. Oh I thought I did. Look where the longing for small spaces. Stone walls hugging close. Confining. There is a light here, mm. in a tight space beneath the floor. Secret things that shine. Are you talking like down here? Like if I feather fall down here? Listen, I have feather fall capabilities. I have to use them. Keep a blade close. Keep a blade close. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can... I don't know, this is... <laughs> Watch... Death! Oh, it does say death! Oh, dang it. 
I shouldn't have used it then. <laughs> okay. Dang it. Hey, if I, like, let you out, like, what'll happen? You think this is funny? It's a... Eh, never mind. Have this guy do it. Seven bone... Man, I really should be... I keep pressing the wrong thing. I really should be bringing this guy out. <sighs> I was like, we're gonna barely get there, but not quite. That's okay, we can try again. Um... I don't wanna... Yeah, it's like, I just... I don't need to use inspiration on it, I just wanna try again. Oh! Wanna try again? <gasps> oh no, can I? <laughs> Easy. Uh, wait, there might be a tr uh, I don't know what, why did it go down to 10? What am I, what exact, was that, was that the trap I was, I was trying to disarm? There's a trap, there is a trap to unlocking. Okay, a Asterion gets to stand by him, a little lonesome. Lost in thought. The rest of us get to stand over here. <laughs> I want to see what happens. I mean, not when we blow Asterion up. But, uh... Simple. When we unlock this. Yeah, I hear the trap noise. I hear you. Run! No? No trap? Well, I unlocked it. Step quick. Well, well hang on there. I'm reloading because I want the trap, disarm trap kits back. I didn't, I forgot I only had two. So that's when using my inspiration would be good. I thought I was just lock picking, like I wasn't reading because I'm illiterate. I thought I was just picking a lock, not trying to disarm a trap. Ooh, a nat 20 this time on the disarm. Okay. Oh, now we lockpick. We should be good. Yeah, we good. We good. Look at all those bonuses. Um, still breathing, despite everything. I get the credit. If not over, then through. Are you gonna? <laughs> Okay. Look at where the absolutes love gotten. Dead! Thanks for breaking me out. Gonna find me a new tribe. One that appreciates the old ways. Uh, good luck to you, my god. He just, wow, no, his, his god just teleported him out. Oh, believe, you, you gotta believe in, in him, jeez. What's up here? The <laughs> goblin god. He knows what's up. I'm just gonna... Just gonna sit on this stool. Asterion, come over here and see if you see anything. No? No? We just... Oh! A silver glass! I can reach it! I guess not. That's weird. Well, I mistake. don't know how to get further down. Could I, like, jump in this cage? Oh my gosh, hang on, let me see Still if I can alive. jump in. So, that's progress. <laughs> I'm actually, I was curious if we could lower it. not drop it but like lower it that would be cool I was kind of exploring along 
because I wanted to see because I am looking for a particular thing in here but I don't know where to look and my friend said that these burrow holes only really take you to like pre-existing rooms they don't take you to like new rooms so not pre-existing but like rooms that you can get to in other ways um so I bet you that burrow hole that that guy was trying to get into wherever he was over here did I was there yellow there that is now gone in the chasm that I'm in? Hello? We're being haunted. Anyway, this is hilarious. I can't. I can. Watch. Gail was like, absolutely not. These two were like, sure, why not? And Carlac's like, yeah! <laughs> why not? Well, we've been in here for an hour and 40 minutes. Well, probably like an hour. We've been in here for an hour. And I haven't been able to find what I came in here to find. So I'm probably going to look it up. Because I want it very much. And I'm not spoiling it, what I want, but I don't know where to go to get it. But I did find this guy, so that was cool. <laughs> I wonder if he'll show up in Act 2 as like a Goblin King and he'll owe me a favor or something. That would be cool. Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. And with that, we'll go ahead and stop there. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to every single one of my patrons, including my acorns. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And thank you, Adam. Thank you for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support. It truly means a lot. Thank you so much. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in his support of me in the channel. And I just cannot thank you enough, honestly. Thank you so much for putting up with me and being so supportive and being very nice. <laughs> so thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.